This is a podcast of the Vocal Studio Singapore. Find your inner voice. Welcome back to our session. We talk about voice, singing, teaching, and music, and the life around it. We're the vocal coaches at the Vocal Studio Singapore. Hi, this is Hannah, and Hannah. today we have it's Coach Boyana. Boyana with <laughs> me. Yes, hello. Hello. Uh, so today. Uh, we are going to talk about a new interesting genre followed by our previous month's topic which was gospel music this month we are discovering more into the new genre which is super fascinating so exciting um uh it's a classical <laughs> it's a classical musical genre so very very excited very excited personally and also like amongst ourselves we were thinking wow this is a lot to cover there are so many things to address and also a lot of questions uh because we generally teach uh, contemporary and more more modern style music but it's always always a you know like a huge uh fascination for us to look into the classical music and, and learn from it so wanted to uh use this session as um yeah, as an introductory podcast for us to uh, give more, share more about the history and, you know, like overview of the classical singing as a musical genre and uh, some of the, uh, the tips that you might find useful um, for, you know, pro improving your own singing and also expanding your knowledge into the classical singing. So we have our Boyana, uh, who will be right sharing a lot uh, of the um, about the experience and also the insight and uh, knowledge about the classical music. Who herself has trained in classical singing, right, Boyana? Yeah. yeah. Hi, yeah. Hannah. Yeah. Thanks for the introduction. Just a little correction. Uh, classical music is a huge term, so we're gonna have to focus on classical singing. Yeah. Classical uh, singing. And and we, we, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what, what, what's classical music, classical singing, the definitions and, you know, all the um, that facts that are interesting and that, you know, maybe people I think definitely would like to hear. So, yeah, I've been uh, going to answer your questions. I've been classically trained for a few years uh, and uh, I, yes, that's, that's, that's the, simple, the simple answer to, to the question. Yeah. <laughs> in a French slang, for example, when you say la classe, it means that something is really highly appreciated. It's really good. It has a very good quality. So there we go. And the word itself uh, means um, it's an old word, which, which has a few, it means balance, perfection, social harmony, you know, and kind of the good old days. So the word itself like describes um, this. So there you go. And it makes sense, right? Because when you listen to the music, it does sound like so refined, right? This, the singing as well. Um, so there's a lot of these qualities of, of the representation of the word itself that you can hear in the music. So that's, um, that's one question answered, I hope, um, because we had some questions earlier. We, we, we discussed, you wanted to like, you know, ask your questions. I think this is one of the questions at least. <laughs> All right. So, um, what about classic and singing itself? Uh, what does it represent when we, you know, listen to people, uh, singers singing in a classical manner, right? Um, you know, kind of there's a difference between someone who's classically trained and someone who calls themselves classical singer, right? Or mm. opera singer, or so to say. Someone can be trained, but they don't necessarily, you know, they didn't choose to really identify themselves as a classical singer, you know, and there's a lot of people like that in the world who are singers, professionals, semi-professionals, teachers, etc. Uh, well, I'm one of those. I belong to that category. And then there's the very defined classical opera singers who have a very specific career into that niche only, right? There is a difference. But yeah, of course, I mean, if you're classically trained, um, it's up to you to choose at one point whether you want to stay and stick to that or you want to do something else. But anyhow, it's a super great training to have. You know, I encourage people who are, you know, singers who are open minded and we have a lot of students like that in the school who like to explore, you know, who like to, uh, you know, um, 
learn a lot more for their voices. It's it's a good it's a good technique at least to learn something from the classical singing because there's you know it's a very strong basis. Uh, and as we know, uh, when we sing classical music or a classical classically written pieces for classical or opera or operatic voice, this is also different, but I'll get to that. We need to use a lot of our breath support. We have to learn how to sustain a note and make it sound in an exact same way. And it's a great training for us to have. Mm. Uh, so you don't have to name yourself, you know, necessarily a classical singer. You don't have to really you know, be that, but why not have a little training and learn something more? And there we go. We are starting, you know, the podcast about it today. So I encourage people to just open up and have a little bit of interest uh, in, in classical singing. Yeah, I think it could be, you know, like one of those also singing genres that people find a bit intimidating because when it comes to this classical singing, there is this very distinct voice. It's very, mm -hmm. very distinctive voice, right? How the singers control it and it's just yeah. very resonant and people feel like they cannot really produce such sound mm -hmm. in a beautiful yeah. manner. Um, yeah. <clears throat> But we definitely see as a vocal coaches, even though uh, we, you know, we can learn classical way of singing, it doesn't always turn mean that they have to stick by opera or like stick by like classical pieces only, right? Yeah. The training yeah. itself can really overall uh, benefit yeah. the, your singing abilities and capabilities, right? And yeah. yes, it's really nice to just hear that. Yeah, the... Uh, that the fact that you are trained in classical singing doesn't uh, confine you or limit you to be only a classical singer. So if they have, you know, if anybody has a little bit of concern about approaching this, once I learn it, will it be, you know, impossible for me to uh, sing different types of music? It's not really the case. It's really for you to expand your own, um, yeah, ability for the singing and also perspectives, I guess. So... Yeah, what does the, okay, so people have some ideas about the classical singing voice, right? Mm -hmm. What yeah. about the classical singing technique and the voice make it so different from the pop or just contemporary singing? Yeah, well, 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 there, there is, there is something that, you know, uh, we could explain. Uh, so the, the, the basic classical techniques for singing opera and non-opera are also different. Uh, I mean, largely, largely they're the same, but if you sing opera, right, back in the day, there was no microphones. So our, one of the, the first thing that you had to do or to be able to, to you, you, as a singer, you had to be able to sing and fulfill the whole space, like in a whole hole, you know, in a, the hole with your own voice though, because there was no microphone. So people had no choice. This yeah. is why, you know, the, the music was not really named classical back then. It was just music. So you had to sing, right? So then later on when microphones came in and the popular music, or you know, uh, you know everything that comes from jazz, etc. That's that's a completely different era. But then there was microphones. There was a completely different timings, you know, and people, you know, develop different types of music, um, of of singing. Uh, so an opera singer must project, as I said, you know, her voice, their voices over, you know, the whole orchestra, the whole. So that's a requirement. That's why you know, we have to have that operatic sound that is really heavy and strong and it comes really from your diaphragm, you know, you can't, you can't even sing opera if you don't open your whole core and your whole, you know, stomach <laughs> and diaphragm to be singing from. So that's the, 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 the very first requirement. And that makes it different from a natural singing voice that you know, we would use in popular music if we were, you know, having a microphone. So mm -hmm. it's literally like a requirement that was happening back in the 17th century that it was just like that. There was no choice for people to sing in a different way, you know. Mm. So that is the main difference if you want to categorize it, you know, what is the difference in terms of singing voice, you know, why do we have in popular music, we can have a very small voice and a good microphone. And if the microphone is good, that, that small voice, which, you know, has a nice alignment, it can really like reach everyone because there's microphone, there's speakers. But um, yeah, in, in, in classical and opera singing, you know, it's the other way around. You have to become the powerhouse of your own, of your own voice. You know, you have to use your body a lot. And so it is that. really about, so yeah, compared to the natural singing, it's more really about amplifying your voice. Yeah, you are your own 
power power center you know you don't rely on anything else but yourself and this is why you know in training it requires sometimes a lot of time because our body is also developed over time right if you start training yourself when you're like 14 years old you have the body of a kid or of a teenager and then your body will change over time you know especially for ladies and men even more you know right so then we work a lot with the body and then we have to be patient and wait for that alignment of tone to happen for our body to become stronger, etc. So it's a, it's a long, long journey, but it's um, very interesting to be able to, you know, when we look back and we're like, wow, when I started, my voice was so little and I couldn't like sing classically. And now like four or five years down the road, look at me, you know, so it's, uh, it's quite an achievement actually, if you look at it that way. I see. Yeah. For then how long would it take for a student if it is a, you know, like a new, newly starting or beginning mm-hmm. uh, entry mm-hmm. students to shape the voice and then properly sing the pieces? Oh, okay. That's a very interesting question. It's very, it's, it's, it's very individual, you know. Uh, obviously, depending on what standards are you looking at, if mm-hmm. you are looking at an operatic area where you have to fit an opera, maybe you need a lot more time because the criteria are very narrow. So you have to sound, as you said, in a particular way, you have to be that. You cannot be whoever you want to be. You have to first technically grasp everything. And then after a while, you know, you can work on some details and make the composition your own. How long will it take? I mean, hmm. It's always a super tricky it's, question, it's, but everybody asks yeah. the question, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I would say, I mean... It, it's not if you are trained before you know maybe in uh, five six lessons you can master the piece you know if you have some previous background if you're completely new and you want to learn uh, you know if you're new to classical to opera singing then it's going to require a while it, because we don't really see when we when we when we train the um you know our classical singing voice we don't really necessarily look at one piece of music and then we adapt our you know our uh, technique to to suit that particular genre of music we're looking at the large scale we're looking at singing from the diaphragm making a nice rounded tone etc so there's a lot of these very uh, demanding elements that we're looking into and so this is more important than that one particular piece that we choose and obviously you know how it is in opera it's 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 a uh, you know you have to fit a certain standard so it really depends on the piece that you choose so it would be good for for anyone that wants to go this way to choose something that really m- suits their voice you know yeah cool couple of months maybe but you know only by learning one piece it's 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 worth the journey though you know it's yeah. because you learn so much from 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 that a lot from only one let's say operatic piece, one aria or something, you know. So you can apply in whatever you learned in many other, you know, uh, uh, singing mm. techniques or whatsoever later. So okay. I guess it's more about, you know, like, so there are so many different things to cover to, for you to sing one piece nicely, right? In yeah. Terms of the voice and right. the, the breath and the, everything else. So within probably yes. one, two months, if you, depending on what you choose, you will get to the level one of certain skills, right? Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. It there's mean there's always you're... better and better and better. And this is the thing, if you are really so perfectionist you know if you're really into like because there are a lot of students like that they really want to master one piece and they want to sound perfect and that they don't mind singing it for so long and for too too many times yeah, if you're that yeah. type of person it's perfect then you can consider a little bit of classical training <laughs> <laughs> True. all right so, okay so i, I kind of deviated from with my own questions about see like from uh, about uh, learning classical singing and how long it'll take uh, what yeah. are the benefits of doing the classical training um yeah back to you so is there anything else that you yeah i would just I would, yes. yeah i would just cover whatever i thought i, I should cover so this this the six type of voices i'm not going to go into details because we already have this podcast from the past about the six types of voices that we covered and also in the third series of this podcast we have a guest that we're going to bring who's going to talk a little more about it right about the voices who is very much into classical singing we got someone from canada 
that we're going to bring in and uh you know he'll share a lot more of these insights uh with us so let's let's not go too much into details but yeah the six type of voices will be bass baritone tenor a uh, soprano mezzo soprano alto and then in this uh in these uh, six uh, different types of uh, categorizations of voices, there is also subcategories as well. But we'll go through it, you know, uh, in another series. And then, uh, what else I would like to cover? Yeah, I mean, classical singing composers that, uh, you know, some singers might want to listen to. Uh, I've got a few names here. Uh, I've got Giuseppe Verdi, who has written beautiful operas. Um, you can look at him. You can look at Mozart, of course, uh, and then uh, Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach. You can look at, um, who else did I have, which I didn't mention, Handel, yeah. uh, Richard Wagner, uh, and yeah, just a few names. Um, and then you can type uh, just arias from these, or like uh, singing, singing arias, singing uh, pieces from these five, six uh, names that I mentioned. And then you can start listening uh, because they're very different, you know, mm. they all come from different era and they have a different way of writing for different types of voices. So take a look, listen to, to some, some songs, maybe later, uh, if you want to have some questions, we'll be happy to answer and give you some insight on that. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, and then there's a few other things that I could go through. Um, the beginnings of you know when you if you if someone wants to train their voice uh to to sound you know in the classical way they need a lot of patience that's uh something that i this is some of my personal experience but it's also a general rule um because when as we mentioned earlier it takes a lot of time but then you know if you are determined that you want to spend you know a good amount of your life in, in singing if you love music so much then definitely you should consider it and you have to be very patient because it requires a lot of time for you to, you know, produce a nice and healthy uh, tone, operatic tone. Um, you need maturity, I guess. Maturity doesn't mean in terms of age, you know. Mm -hmm. You can be 14, you can be 20, you can be 50, you know. Mm -hmm. When I started my training, I wasn't very mature, to be honest, uh, because I had a natural singing voice. So I could naturally sing without training. And then when I started training my, my operatic voice, it was very tough for me because I felt I had two different voices. So it was very, 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 very tough psychologically at, a, at, 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 at one point. Uh, but I persisted. Yeah. So persistence is another thing that you have to have. Discipline. You know, if you don't practice your, you know, your breathing, your scales, your, uh, I don't know, your vibrato and a lot of elements, then, uh, you know, it's, you're going to be stagnating a little. So you definitely have to practice. Discipline is a must. We know for all classical music, uh, you know, pieces, even if it's not singing, you really have to repeat them as many times as possible because that's how you achieve mastery, right? Mm. So that's another thing that I would like to share and what to expect out of opera classical vocal training. Hmm, that's interesting. Breathing. So first thing is you're gonna, you can uh, improve your breath, uh, breath control, uh, which means that your voice will automatically become a lot stronger um, and you'll be able to project more if you have breath, good breath control because, you know, breathing is projected, is connected to uh, projection as well. So people who have, you know, issues with breathing and projection, if they start uh, singing classical music pieces they can definitely improve these two things in their singing voices did you first start out as a classical singing student you know you uh, my first uh official training uh you know vocally like one-on-one -on -one, uh, was classical yes oh i see so we'll get back to that a little right after a little after you share yeah. more about the classical music Absolutely. Any question you want to ask, I'm very happy to go for it and give you all the answers that I have. <laughs> so where to start? Shall I, shall I open this, uh, you know, start talking about it a little? Yeah, sure. Should, right? Okay. All right, then. So classical 
singing, right? And what does it represent? Let's start uh, by the name itself. Uh, the term classical, uh, in essence, if you look at it, uh, I mean, why is the name classical singing, classical music, right? Why do we have that term? Well, first of all, we have to have some sort of uh, term or, 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 you know, a definition, a word for us in order to understand where we stand, right? Um, obviously, back in the day when this music emerged, it was not named classical. So the name classical only started you know, um, appearing in people's minds and it was put out there around the 18th century. Before mm. when it was music, you know, when the composers uh, with per se, how we call them today, the classical music composers, opera composers, etc., they were not named classical, you know, back in the day. They were just music composers because that was the only music. Yes, yeah, singers, composers, and that was the only music that existed. Later on, they named it, you know, uh, so classical was named classical for the purpose of, of selling the you know, the music itself, you know, um, to have some kind of product and explain to people what they're looking at, what they're listening to. So that's then that's one way, one thing. Um, but yeah, we, we still call it classical singing, right? Uh, classical, the word itself. Any any other questions that you want to ask? Um. Yeah, so we, it was very nice, actually, that you mentioned about the composers who wrote different types of music, right, mm -hmm. for the classical singers, for the yeah, singing pieces. Yeah. So uh, what is the, what is the um, aria of, it goes, uh, <laughs> oh, That's the queen Mozart. of the yeah yeah it is it is queen of the night queen of the yeah. night right um, I think it's everyone's favorite <laughs> it is everyone's favorite right so there are several pieces like yeah queen of the night and also if you think about <laughs> like the choir setting it's not only for the solo singer if you think about like classical singing a lot of it was also choir based like for the uh, absolutely that's how it started yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and what is that. Um, I always forget this name. Carl Orof. Carl Orof did like. Ba, 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 ba. What is that? Like Carminu? Carmin Carmina Burana? Yeah, Carmina <laughs> yeah. Burana is another piece that uh, people can look at, you know, and then yeah. get that sensation. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the that's sensation of the classical singing of yeah. you know, the choir. Um, yeah, so. This really it, within even even within the classical singing, uh, I also wanted to point out that it's not only about opera, right? It's one way of singing classical singing, but also if you delve further into it, if you explore different singers, different contexts, different era, different composers, there will also be different like a variety, a variety that you can explore. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah, I think yeah. that's the beauty yeah. of uh, learning the classical pieces as well. Uh, so definitely, sure. if you are interested in classical music, you can look more into it, classical singing, you can um, start learning and, you know, start little step by step. So my last question will be, okay, uh, any suggestion for the beginning level, let's say students, mezzo soprano, uh -huh. it can be like mezzo, like soprano, or it can be uh, for the guys, right? Uh, for the male singers, one or yeah. two pieces that they yeah. can consider. Ooh, um, I would not recommend any particular pieces, Hannah, because they're very, very divided mm. uh, into categories. But one thing I would like to point out is um, start with vocal vocalizers, meaning that I have this thing with me. Uh, this is like, this is an old, this is a book that I have from 947. So mm. I don't know if I can see. Can you see that? Yeah, it's from um, it comes from Russia, basically, mm. and uh, it has a uh, some vocal, we call them vocalizers, vocalizing, meaning that there's a lot of different types of um, simple, seemingly simple melodies uh, yeah. that uh, develop different types of, you know, different areas of your singing voice. There's legato, there's breathing, there's staccato. So I would say if you want to start from the basics, really, you, you need to look at these, you know. So this, how, this is how they're, wrote, they're written. Oh, okay. So this, this is, is just very, like, you know, the, the training, training yeah, practice, right? The only training, only very basic training before you go to any aria, you know. Mm. So aria, it's a high level. It's considered mm. a very high level. These are like basic stuff. Then you can also, um, as you do this, you can also place a lot of vowels like I, O, and then you can actually 
have a whole one piece of music divided into different vowels and the melody is also different. So you work on your vowels, you work on your breath support and you work on very simple melodies. Mm -hmm. So this is something that you can look at. And if you have questions again, we will be happy to answer and give you some materials to learn if you wish even. Cool, Russian. Yeah, this is, the, this is really old school, you know, but it's amazing because it's, uh, there's so much to learn from that. Uh, and yeah, I didn't know it was 947. Wow, yeah. there we go. But still it's a nice and effective piece, right? Yeah, this is for sopranos only, but I might have some, some of these for male voices as well. You can find nice. All right, so start Alrighty. with the basics and then develop your way through um, the course. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing more about the um, um, classical singing. And I Thank you for having me with my big pleasure. Sorry next week up. it's gonna yeah. be quite uh, exciting quite interesting uh we're gonna have uh, Brianna is gonna have a, a guest right who's a classical singer and an amazing friend of hers i'm so also looking forward to hearing the podcast and the sharings of it uh so stay tuned for it uh i hope yeah. that this podcast was um you know uh, an, an inspiration for the people to get more interested uh with the beauty of classical singing and how it can benefit your singing voices as well. So thanks everyone for joining. Thank you, Boyana, for sharing. And Thank you, Hannah. Yes. Thank you for having me and have a great day, everyone. And we'll see you next week with a little more, you know, information and even singing from our own other coaches in this genre. So yes. here we go. Okay, have a good day, Alonso. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.